let us now focus on quantity sets. So let's do the same process as before, but changing it pretty slightly. So my wall is defined by return that, and we knew that the first item in this set was a pro uh, quantity set. Property definition is an IFC element quantity, and that is in fact an IFC quantity set. true so this quantity set has quantities <laughs> right so our quantities may be a length so for the height another length for the length uh, another length for the width uh, an IFC quantity area for the gross footprint area and so on and so forth so if we were to take the first item in the set which is an IFC quantity length if we write name we get its name if we write length value we get its value however for item number uh, three in our set what we get here should be the area value to retrieve that so to make it simpler we could just take the third attribute of our list uh, of our set to retrieve the same information okay so we're now ready to write more robust code let's repeat exactly the same thing as we did before but we'll change it slightly so now instead of uh, IFC property set we'll write IFC element quantity just as it was written here, I see element quantity. And that QTO, well, Q set, let's call it Q set. That Q set is the relating property definition. So it will have quantities. So for quantity, in Piece, uh, in Q set quantities, so we'll call it if the property is a IFC physical simple quantity, right under quantities. We should write under quantities the quantity name and I'll also take the quantity's third value. Now we'll be able to add to our Q set our Q sets the Q set name and also give it our quantities dictionary now we can write print q set name was added okay, let's check if this actually worked let's increase this again and let's just paste it in this does not work because we didn't copy the top line let's copy it again so QTO wall based quantities was added. If we write Q sets, what do we get? QTO wall based quantities is something called height, which has this value, the length is that. But you may ask, what are the units of each of these? And if the unit was not stored at the level of the entity, as you can see here, because we have the gross footprint under the name, second attribute is empty third is empty and the fourth has our value so what we need to do is actually get it at the project level so let's write project equals file by type IFC project we'll take the first one in 
project equals project zero. Now this project has units in context. This units in context has units. Let's write this a bit prettier. Let's copy this line. So for unit in product unit print unit. So we have millimeters for everything that's length, square meters for areas, cubic meters for volumes, or kilograms for anything mass related, etc. etc. So that should give us how to read the dimension of our quantities. We can then move on to extracting all of these quantities in batch, whether we want to export them to CSV or later look at how we can use them in a dashboard to automatically change things and calculate totals based on object types and their levels and so on.